All right, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, please listen. Tomorrow, I'm not going to be here. I'm having surgery. I will not be here. With that being said, your instructions for tomorrow in class are already up. AP World. Bennett is not here today. You have the period to complete your assignments due on Thursday. So tomorrow in class, you're going to put your headphones in and get to work. That's the assignment. Um, no talking is necessary. I want the sub to tell me everything was silent. Everyone clear. So you can work on your focus. You can work on your map. You can work on your timer. I, I don't care what you need to do. There are videos up for everything. Um, get something done. Now, I'll come to you, Mr. Harding. I don't need you wandering around. Thank you very much. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, if you're already finished with your focus and you have everything done, over here I have my week three assignment. You can come over here and pick up your focus for next week tomorrow if you want to get a head start. Is everyone clear? Now, can you completely ignore that this exists? Absolutely. Because on Thursday you're going to pick up my own. So, <laughs> so, if you are in here and you have nothing to do and you want to get started on something, then you are more than welcome to grab next week's and start working ahead. Because the moment you finish it, the moment it's over. Okay? So, that's up to you. If you also want to pretend like it doesn't exist, that's also fine. Go ahead, live your life. Um, but you will be getting it on Thursday nonetheless. All right? So tomorrow I'm not here. I will tell you that um, if I don't get a glowing review about how the kids were quiet and they worked the whole period, then I will make you miserable for the weeks to come. Do we have a job in that? No, I'm very capable of doing that. So um, get, make sure you are sitting here doing what you need to do, getting work done, or sitting there doing nothing. I personally don't care. It's your life. You can do work for free at school, or you can pay for it with personal time at home. Either or. I want a good review, and I want it to be silent. Is everyone clear? I will not be embarrassed. What? Okay, you grab this. Just grab the focus. Don't grab all the other stuff. All right. Let's take a look over here. Uh, today we did 1 through 20, and you have a lecture. Tomorrow, no Bennett, you're working on your own. Thursday, you have a test, 25 questions, all multiple choice. Um, it's going to be hard. It's harder than you're expecting. It is not just rote memorization. The only thing you can do to prepare, because you've probably never seen a test like mine, and it's not because I make it hard, it's because I use AP questions. Do you see the difference? It's not like I sit around making up shit and just like come up with ways to harass sophomores. It's AP questions, and I start using them week two, clearly. So the caliber is higher than you're expecting. It is not basic recall. The best thing you can possibly do is know your content as well as you can as soon as you sit down for the test. Is everyone clear? Because the best thing you can do is know your content super well. So when I give you something you've never seen, which is what the stimulus are, you can use your content to kind of help you get the right answer. But until you see it, I can't really help you with strategy. Charlie? It's like a format. It's a multiple choice? It's all multiple choice. Um, you'll see passages, primaries, pictures, diagrams, and charts on the test. And they'll ask you about things you don't know of using that information and using what I've taught you this week. It's hard. It's not basic recall. So if you think you can memorize some facts and think that's what's going to be on the test, you're wrong. Now, there's some low-level questions to help with everyone's scores on a couple. Uh, but the rest are hard. But we'll have a deeper conversation and perhaps study for them once we all see the test. Do you have a whole period for it? Yeah. You'll come in, you'll do a do now, I'll collect your assignments, and then you'll begin your test. And then you'll have usually about 34 minutes, 35 minutes, which is a pretty good time. It's only 25 questions. Charlie? Uh, do you curse? No, why would I curse? No, I taught like a champion. Charlie, why would I curse? No, I don't curse. Uh, every once in a great while, I curse, but I wouldn't uh, put your pins your hope and dreams on a curse. Does that make sense? But, well, it's only on week two. It's only on the stuff that I've started on week two. Anything that has week two in its title. When we get to week three, it is only on week three. When I'm in week 16, it's only on week 16. So it's only on that content. It does not build because you would die. The weight would be too much. Okay? All right. Do we want to finish content first, or do we want to review for a minute? We'll review for a minute. Why not? Here we go. On your whiteboard. 
on your whiteboard. Please tell me what is the name of the holy book of the Quran? Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> on your whiteboard, please tell me who is the prophet of Islam? Good, Nicole. Muhammad, on your whiteboard. What year does Muhammad die? Who can work? Oh, Stella, I would love to do all the work. You're right. It, it's better this way. It's better this way. Rohan. 632. 632, on your whiteboard. Please tell me, what is the name of the holy book with two spellings, please? Of Islam, people. Two spellings. <laughs> oh, God. The holy book? You don't know what the holy book of Islam is? Look at your notes. Hi, you are more than welcome to look at your notes. It is better that you look at my own notes than looking around and looking at me to try to figure out the answers. There's two spellings of it. You should have two spellings on your board. Only one person has it right. Oh, God. What is it, Rohan? Yeah. Okay, there's two spellings for the Quran. Q-U-R-A-N slash K-O-R-A-N. You need to know both spellings are used interchangeably. You should probably write that down. And the Quran is the what, ladies and gentlemen? The holy, holy book. book. Yeah. Okay, what's the holy book of Christianity? The, the Bible. Bible. They're in, like, same type of thing. Nola. Why am I doing all the heavy lifting here? On your whiteboard, please tell me. Uh, here, this will be helpful, especially for today's instruction. Give me a modern day country in East, a give me two modern day countries in East Asia. Give me two modern day countries in East Asia. Good, I got one. Mr. Tibby, 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 is that right? Tebby, Tebby, Tebby. Because I have another Jackson in here, don't I? Yeah, I have Mr. Harding and Jackson. Okay, I can call you Jackson. Got it. Perfect. I knew there was an issue. All right, on your whiteboard, give me two countries in South Asia. Guys, you gotta know your geography. No, I'm being too You're a big Bangladesh fan, Rohan? Hey, you're completely correct. It's a beautiful country. Persia, it doesn't exist. Nepal, it doesn't exist. Though. All right, Charlie, who are the two big ones we discussed the most? India and Pakistan. India and Pakistan are the two big ones. Uh, Bangladesh is over there, of course. Uh, all right, on your whiteboard, give me two modern-day countries in Southeast Asia. about regions is absolutely vital because on your test tomorrow on Thursday you're gonna see in Southeast Asia and you need to know what countries are actually referring to because that's how we kind of teach it to kind of tie up to it you have to know your regions last one before we start content on your whiteboard please tell me what is the name of oh uh, what is the name of the Cultural Foundation of China? What's the name of the Cultural Foundation of China? What dynasty is the Cultural Foundation of China? Let me clarify what I wanted. Right on your board, show me the answer here, people. Callie. Song Dynasty on your whiteboard. Please tell me. What is the name of the founder of Confucianism? No, tell me Confucius. Confucius is his nickname. What's the name of the actual dude behind it? 
That's not how you spell it. Kong, Kong, like King Kong. Fuzi, F-U-Z-I-E. Kong Fuzi. On your whiteboard, please tell me, what is the name of the invention that connects North China to South China? Good. What is it, Lily? Grand Canal. Grand Canal. On your whiteboard, please tell me. China is the only place that this will exist until the 1600s. What is it? It is going to be a complete transition to a merchant, merchant, artisan uh, in economy. What do you got, Emerson? Proto-industrialization. Proto-industrialization Proto has occurred because what new crop? It's a whiteboard question, people. That's why we're doing whiteboards. Stella, what is it? Champa rice. On your whiteboard, please tell me what are the two major items in China that is going to drive um, sales? What are the two major items that people are going to China for? No. Good. Gianni, what are they? Silk and porcelain. Silk and porcelain, absolutely. It's not wheat because they. Europe can grow their own wheat, right? It's not food crops because people can grow their own food crops. It's a specialty item. It's like porcelain and silk. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name of... Oh, what is it called when you conquer a territory and they get to have some autonomy as long as they write you a big fat check every month? I can tell you right now you don't know your content as well as you need to. Split Venus? No. No, oh, that's a tax on your religion. Good. What is it, Tyler? Tributary system. Tributary system. Hi, by the way, if I'm asking you these questions and you don't know the answer, you should probably write some of it down, don't you think? Sounds like pretty big, important information, especially because I had you put a box around tributary system in your notes because tributary system is the most common type of empire. By the way. So we will be discussing tributary systems for the dawn of eternity here in this room. On your whiteboard, please tell me, what is the largest di uh, caliphate? What is the largest caliphate? Amy? Abbasid Caliphate. On your whiteboard, give me through ah, four regions that the Abbasid Caliphate dominates. I'll take either or. Uh, there's two translations for it. Either one's for it. Okay, I'm telling you right now, seventh period. <laughs> you need cleanup for content. Yes? Okay, so how to study for my test on Thursday. Uh, you need to read through your notes. And I would clean up your notes by making quick little annotations of adding things that you've heard me talk about specifically in reviews. That would be helpful. So you should not just read your notes while you're writing in your class. That is a waste of time. You do know that, right? That should be the number one thing you study off of for your test is going back through your notes, kind of cleaning them up, making highlights, making annotations. That would enrich your notes. Second thing is your focus. Those are the two big things that you should. If you really want to be an over-the-top kind of person, don't stop ruining my erasers. Um, you could rewatch my videos. 
I would not do that because by the time it freaks me out, many people watch like six hours of my videos back to back for I think like two minutes time each event with me. So I wouldn't do that, but some people do. It is an option because they're outside. Okay, take out your notebook. Here we go. Okay, Emerson, where do we leave off, girl? Um, the to be fair system. Nice. Okay. Oh, so it's the last thing you should have known. Is that correct? Amy, what do you got? means house of wisdom or house of Islam. Either of those totally work, ladies and gentlemen. When we're talking about Dar al-Islam, you need to know a couple of things. Um, this is like your own space. So set, get the space, center it, Dar al-Islam. Okay, you need to know that Dar al-Islam is an actual tangible place. It's not the title of some empire. It's a place. It's like a university today would be the equivalent, right? The greatest minds in the world are working in Cambridge, Oxford, St uh, uh, Stanford. Uh, I know that's Western uh, dominated, of course, but those are like the three big universities in the world. The smartest people get together and like they change the world at these places. That's what Dar al Islam is doing during the period of 1200 to 1450. The smartest people are converging in this one place and sharing ideas and creating new foundational concepts. Okay? Like, they make the idea of surgery and anesthesia. Yeah. They're the ones who discover germs. Yeah. They also discover how to keep ice cold enough that they can enjoy iced tea in the middle of a, you know, Middle Eastern summer. Smart or not smart? Super smart. Because I do not understand refrigeration even to this day. All right. So, with that being said, it is a place, it's going to move around the Middle East. You should write that down. It starts in Baghdad. It is going to move around based on different type of empires. So Dar al Islam is something we're going to refer back to. Um, any major city in the Middle East, Baghdad is the home of it. Um, it'll be rotated. Actually, it ends up going into North Africa for a while too, which is pretty cool. Anyway, all right. What you need to know, ladies and gentlemen, that underneath the Abbasid Empire, so inside, write it down, inside the Abbasid Empire, Dar al-Islam is occurring. They're the first protectors of the Dar al-Islam, the first ones to facilitate it, right? You know, when we think about Oxford and Cambridge, what country are they in? England. The reason why they're one of the, the oldest universities in the world is because the country that they're in is super stable, right? England has never been conquered except in 1066. And uh, Stanford, uh, not Stanford, Oxford and Cambridge were invented in the 1100s, okay? They have continued to exist because their empire that built them continues to exist. Same thing with the Abbasid Empire. You need to know, ladies and gentlemen, that the Abbasid Empire or the Abbasid Caliphate is going to mix three groups of people. Write it down. The Abbasid Caliphate, the home of Dar al-Islam, that's how these tie together, is a mixture of three groups of people. Malmuk, Maluk, Seljuk, and Al-Andalus. I don't need you to memorize too much. I just need you to understand. I need you to write down the three. Maluk, Seljuk, Al-Andalus. I need you to know that it's three different groups of people who form this massive empire. Is everyone clear? Okay. I don't need you to know where they are. I don't need you to know any of that. But I need you to know that it's broken up into three distinct areas and these three. You do need to know Al-Andalus is in Spain. Write it down. Al-Andalus is in Spain, okay? They will be in Spain for a total of 900 years. Write it down. So is this a short thing or a long thing? Mom, hi, guys, our country has only been around for 200 and something years. So 900 years, is it bigger or smaller than 200? Bigger. bigger. And we think we are very big deals, don't we? <laughs> Us as Americans. <laughs> like we've been around for 200 years. 
they've been around for 900 years, so please keep that in context. You need to know they're in Al Andalus, and they're, they're in Spain. You need to know they're Islamic, because what empire are they from? Obviously, Caliphate. If it's Caliphate, it's obviously Islamic. You need to know that they are going to bring trade to Europe. They're the ones who carry trade into Europe. What is Europe doing at this time, Donald? Um, when the Abbasid yeah. Caliphate is doing all of this incredible stuff, vetting trigonometry, doing surgeries, what is Europe doing? Yeah, I mean, they have people living and stuff like that. They're fighting amongst themselves. They're not really doing that much. They're not expanding. They're not really interacting with people. They're pretty isolated up there. No one's going up there because there's nothing to get up. They don't have any goods that anyone wants, okay? If you feel sad for Europe, they'll be okay. But right now, every other corner of the world is doing much better than them. So let's appreciate that, yes? China's booming economy. Obviously, Caliphate is achieving incredible scientific discoveries. Europe is playing with fish in comparison. Okay, here we go. You need to know that the Abbasid Caliphate creates trigonometry. I don't need you to know who the dude is. Okay? The next time you hate trigonometry, you just need to yell. Yell at us. Yeah, the Abbasid Caliphate. You know, they're the ones ruining lives. Okay, you need to know that women were supported in the arts and culture of the Dar al Islam. So ladies, if you were especially talented, not moderately talented, but especially talented, you were celebrated in uh, the caliphate, okay? In other parts of the world, are we celebrated? No, no, no that would be silly, right? Because women, boo. Uh, in the Abbasi Caliphate, if you were truly incredible, then they would celebrate you and open the doors to the Dar al Islam. But the average women, are we going into the Dar al Islam? No. Mediocre men, are they going in? Yeah. Women, no. All right, medical advances. You need to know the Dar, uh, Dar al Islam, the Abbasi Caliphate, are facilitating new technology and medicine. They're the ones creating standards of medical care that we're still using to this day. Cleaning wounds. We're doing that today. They created this, okay? You need to know that they are also translating Greek and Roman texts into Arabic. Write it down. They're preserving Greek and Roman culture. So the reason why we have so much of it is because we have the Byzantines, who we will talk about next week, preserving it, and obviously Caliphate are preserving it as well. Like, did you know the, floor, uh, the Tampa Museum of Art has a huge Greek and Roman display of pots? Like, it's huge for, like, Tampa. You know, you expect it in New York or something, but Tampa has a huge collection. And the reason why is because these empires are preserving it. Everyone understood it was, like, a big deal. All right. Islam is your next subheading. There's a couple things you do need to know about Islam. First of all, you need to know the prophet is Muhammad. It sounds redundant, but write it down because you're going to see where we're going. You need to know that the prophet is Muhammad. What year is Muhammad dying, Callie? 632. 632. Okay, after he dies, we have the four rightly guided caliphs. Write it down. Muhammad dies in 632, and then we have the four rightly guided caliphs. Caliph is the leader of the religion. C-A-L-I-P-H. Caliph. There are four rightly guarded, uh, guided caliphs. After the fourth one dies, there's a fracture in Islam. Write it down. After the fourth one dies, there's a fracture in Islam. It splits. So, Muhammad dies in 632. There are four caliphs that go about 40 years combined. And after the fourth one dies, we have a fracture. It breaks into two. You need to know it breaks into two sects. S-E-C-T-S. -E it breaks into two sects. Sunni, which is the majority. Majority of Muslims, even today here in the United States and all around the world, are Sunni. They believe in the most qualified. Sunnis 
are the majority, and they believe in the most qualified to be the caliph. So the most religious, the most devout, the best studied, gets to be the caliph or the leader of the religion. Okay? Once it breaks into sects, you have Sunni, and then you also have Shiite. Shiite has two spellings. You need to know both spellings. These are the spellings. It go, it's interchangeable. Okay? You need to know that they are the minority, and they are all about a bloodline. So they think all caliphs should be related to who? Muhammad. The problem is, after the poor rightly guided caliphs, who are all descendants of Muhammad died, what happened to the bloodline? It's dead. It's gone. They're waiting for a bloodline to reappear and say, hi, I'm a descendant of Muhammad. And you should listen to me. They're waiting for that. If you think that's bizarre, the Jews are waiting for their savior. <laughs> uh, the Christians are waiting for Jesus to come back. Okay, so like, there's lots of religions who are around waiting, so it's not bizarre. Um, that's what they believe. Okay. So, Muhammad dies 632, four rightly guided caliphs, then we fracture. Fractures within about 60 year, 40, 60 years after Muhammad dies. It's a pretty quick fracture. Christianity doesn't fracture until about 400 years after Jesus dies. So just give you kind of a comparison. So this is a pretty quick fracture, and it's because of no definitive inheritance. You need to know that there is the holy text is the Quran. There is two spellings to the Quran. You need to know it. Some of you didn't know it today on the board. So we need to make sure we have that information. There's two spellings for Quran. You have to know it. Okay, put a big star. It is passed via trade. Okay, it is passed via trade. You cannot do forced conversion for Islam. It is against the Quran. People pick it up by trading. People see people praying and they're like, oh my God, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, I'm praying to Allah. All of those things, and that's how the information spreads. Okay, you're going to write the word Sufism, which is right here, and put it in a box. It's going to come up 6,000 times over the course of the year. Sufism, put it in a box. Okay. Do not, uh, you're going to write this down, and we'll talk about it. Okay, write down, they are mystics. What's a mystic? Oh, no, what's a mystic, Viola? A missionary? No, that would be a missionary. We've never heard of a mystic, Jay. Fortune teller is a mystic. Remember, they can tell what your future is, right, by having this touch of globe or whatever type. Uh, fortune tellers, what else would be another mystic thing? Hello? What do you got? Like a wizard. Like a wizard, absolutely. I don't even know of all the names right now. I'm really living my childhood, and it's been amazing. Absolutely. I'm a Gandalf the White kind of girl, as you know. So, with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, they're mystics, okay? You need to know that they use magic to get people to convert to Islam. That's what a Sufi is. Sufism is the act, a Sufi is the person. Okay? They get people to convert to Islam. Put a big star. I know you already put a box around it. They are the leading converters to Islam. Think about it. If I got up on a little soapbox and said, Hi, I'd like to talk to you today about the Quran. Would you stop and listen to me? Hello? Yeah. Probably not. Let's be honest. It doesn't matter what the book is. If I stood in front of him on a busy street and said, Hi, let me talk to you about blah, 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 you'd keep walking by me. But if I had like a magic show with like smokes and like sounds and like light vibrations and like all that cool shit, You'd watch, wouldn't you? Yeah, you would. That's how they get people to convert to Islam. It's this whole idea of like this mysticism or that Allah 
or Muhammad has given them powers, and this kind of entices people to see the power of Islam. If you think this is crazy, there are people today in Christianity who think that getting bit by snakes is how God shows their love. Who literally stand in church and get bit by snakes. So before you throw stones at other people's religious ideas, just know that every religion does some outside the box type of thinking. Can we agree? So before you start casting stones here, I mean, look at all the sects of your religion before you start casting stones at these. All right, skip a space center. All right, let's go to South Asia. What is the biggest country in South Asia, modern day country, Gianni? We just did on the boards, dude. You've got to give me a shot. Give me a shot. I'll tell you if you're wrong. Sorry. No. Luke. India. India. So if you are not good on your regions, every time I say a region, you should put India or East Asia for Gianni, for China, and help you kind of build up this information that you have to have. You need to know that South Asia is going to have Hinduism. as its original religion, okay? It's its original religion. What do we know about Hinduism? It's polytheistic, you need to know that. You need to know that the holy book is called the Vedas, okay? You need to know that the holy book is called the Vedas. You need to know that um, people what is the major component of uh, Hinduism that you have to know? It's a social structure. What do you got, Izzy? The caste. the caste system. The caste system is liked by everyone in the top half and despised by everyone at the bottom, bottom half. Absolutely. Put a big star. This is a big deal. Because of the caste system, other religions, Donald, write this down. Because of the caste system, other religions will thrive in South Asia. What does that mean? What does that mean? Other religions will thrive here because of the caste. Stella. It means that like, the people that don't like the caste will like, convert to Islam. Yes, it means other people, the lower levels of the caste, are going to ditch Hinduism and pick up other religions. What is going to be another religion that comes here, Mr. Rinkus? India today, what is spoken of in the two major religions? What are the two religions? Give me a religion, Mr. Rinkus. I will say, you're better in the morning than you are in the afternoon. I'm trying to give you, but I need you to be listening here. Yes? I'm trying very hard, but I need you thinking with me, yeah? Okay. Islam, write it down. Okay? Hinduism is so oppressive in its caste system that the lower levels of the caste are going to bail and pick up new religions, which is going to make South, e South Asia prolific on creation of religion and having religion. You need to know Islam is going to be there. Why are people going to sign up to be Islamic? Why, Jade? There's no caste system. I'm equal to you instead of you being, you know, disrespectful to me. That's why people are going to do it. How does Islam get to India, Donald? By force? Uh, no, actually. It's by force. It's by invasion. Write it down. Okay? It's by invasion. It's going to arise, arise by invasion, but spread via trade. So, Donald, you are half right. Okay. So, Islam is going to come to South Asia. Now, is Islam and Hinduism get along really well? No, they absolutely hate each other, and that is what's dividing India today. They're literally killing each other. Um, there's kind of a genocide happening in India right now. India is filled with mostly Hindus at this point because of the, you know, the divider in 1941. We'll get to it. Um, and they're killing Muslims inside the borders of India today. They take contractors and kill them. They make up rumors saying, oh, my God, this uh, Muslim killed a cow, a holy cow, so what does everyone in the whole town go do? Lynch them. Yeah, they lynch them. And whether he killed the cow or not, what do they do? 
They kill him anyway. It's a huge genocide happening in India today in 2023. This division is a huge deal. And the reason why Islam shows up is a horrible kind of component, right, Callie? So you need to know South Asia is going to be torn between these two religions. You need to know that South Asia is decentralized. South Asia, India, is decentralized until an empire rises, and then it crashes back to a, ton, a thousand little kingdoms. Okay, India will have thousands of little kingdoms, then one empire will rise and unify them into one incredible thing, and then when it falls, it crashes into a thousand kingdoms. That's the pattern we'll see over and over again in India. Okay, no other place in the world breaks up like India does. I mean, that shit is massive. Okay? All right, Southeast Asia is your next subheading. Okay, Southeast Asia. What is a major country in Southeast Asia, Marla? Um, Give me a guess. Mongolia? Mongolia is in East Asia or Central Asia. No. What do you got, Dylan? Huh? Indonesia. Indonesia is a great answer. Thailand is usually the one I refer to. Okay? So... This is what we're talking about, guys. You need to know your difference. This is what South Asia looks like. This is India. This is Pakistan. That's Bangladesh. Okay? This is South Asia. This is Southeast Asia. Look at Southeast Asia. It's decentralized. Why is it decentralized? Nicole, why is South Asia, Southeast Asia decentralized? Yeah, why? Because they're what? No. Why is Southeast Asia decentralized? It has made up of lots and lots of... Oh. There's all water in between these land masses, so what are they? What is it? What do you got? Uh, islands. Yeah, they're islands. Okay. Is it hard to unify islands or easy to unify islands? Hard, absolutely. So you need to know that Southeast Asia is made up of islands, which leads to it being incredibly decentralized. You need to know that there's only really one, two empires we study in Southeast Asia. Why? Because it's really hard to unite all of these people together. Because keep in mind, these are only the big ones. How many little ones are in between them? Bajillion. Like, who knows? Okay, so that's why it's really hard to unify into empires, which is why it's really decentralized. Okay? When we talk about South Asia, uh, Southeast Asia, you need to know that there are two major empires that we'll be studying. Shariva, which is right here. Write it down. You need to know that. It's right here. And then Chimer. So there are two empires that I need you to know. Okay. So next to Shariva, you need to know it's Hindu. <gasps> Why is that so shocking? And it should shock you. That is super unique. You should put a star next to it because it is super unique. Mr. Nash, why is it unique? Yes! So what does that mean? It migrated there. That's what you need to know. You need to know that Sariva picks up Hinduism because of trade. They pick it up because of trade and they're the only place in the world that adopts Hinduism. They're the only one that it spreads to. Is everyone clear? And Chimera, you don't really need to know about too much now. Bye. That's all my content. I was done. Nice. Crushed it. Yeah, absolutely. Everything that comes out of my 